how the relationship between the Rails and the front end going to be in the future. Um, the Rails 6 introduced the Webpacker, uh, but is there a possibility of the Hotwire uh, will be the default of the Rails, maybe um, one of the Omakase parts of the Rails, the Hotwire will be the one of them, or is, is it going to be a um, separate project from the um, Rails standard? What, what can you tell us about, a little bit about that? Yeah, so we've obviously, we've gone through so many iterations on the front end mm -hmm. with Rails over the years, right. in part because the front end has changed so much. Um, there's been such a huge churn in the JavaScript community as people are finding out new different ways to build things as browsers are catching up to developments in the JavaScript language. But I think we've reached the point where there there's room for new ideas. The bundler and transpiling approach that um, Webpack is a continuation of has uh, been the default for almost 10 years. But we're in a different situation now because browsers have caught up and you can now use ES6 directly in all the major browsers without transpiling. And I think that opens just some interesting doors to how we do JavaScript development, how we do front end development, because so much of the complexity today in doing Rails applications comes from the front end. It comes from integration with things like Webpack. And maybe there's a way we can go back to a simpler time without giving up all the capacity that mm -hmm. JavaScript has given us. So Hotwire is our approach at Basecamp um, to doing that. It's a continuation of things we've been doing for for over a decade. Uh, things like Turbo Links that um, we released, I think back at uh, 2011 maybe or something like that. Right, um, right. We continue to develop and extend it and Stimulus, our JavaScript framework, um, also several years old, and now Hotwire is kind of bringing all those things together in a cohesive package that gives you everything you need to build great front end um, for, for Rails applications. Like um, our new email service, hey.com, is built entirely with Hotwire. The, front end package, the JavaScript bundle that we send to uh, customers is only 40 kilobytes, mm -hmm. which is just cool. incredibly small. And it's incredibly mm -hmm. small because it's a very different technique than using React or Woo or, mm -hmm. or other things like that. Right. We, the core of Hotwire is to send HTML over the wire. Hotwire is essentially an abbreviation of HTML over the wire, which means that you're focusing more on server side uh, mm -hmm. uh, generation. So there's all these things that are going on. We're building all our applications like this. I would, well, for sure, uh, Hotwire is going to take the place of Turbolinks in, mm -hmm. in terms of its relationship to, to Rails. Rails has shipped with Turbolinks by default for many years now. The new default in Rails 7 will be Hotwire, but it will be oh. the new default in the same way that Turbolinks was. It's a part of the gem file. You can opt mm -hmm. out, you don't have to do right. it. There will undoubtedly still be many people who want to use Rails to build React applications or other types of applications. But if you don't have a strong preference, um, the Omakasa approach here is that you should try the default and the default mm -hmm. will be Hotwire. Now, right. how it's going to be the default is still open for debate. Can we get away with not having Webpack by default? Can we get away with using ES6 directly in the browser? Um, this relies in part on something called import maps, which is a new standard that Chrome has been uh, already shipping, but there's not yet support in Safari or in Firefox, although there are uh, polyfills so you can get that. Import maps essentially gives you a load path for the browser so you don't have to do compilation. So you can say um, import star from at hotwire slash turbo, and then the import map can uh, translate what at hotwire slash turbo means to a specific file, just like you have package.json um, and the lock file that uh, uh, Yarn gives you to um, resolve what these dependencies are without having to update all the files. 
-hmm. So still trying to figure that out. But even if we are not able to figure it out, or even if we think the polyfill is not good enough, um, we can still ship Hotwire as the default using Webpack as it is. Mm -hmm. Right, cool. So it's going to be uh, maybe uh, the default choice of the Omotase, but you can easily opt out like a turbine yes. test. So, yes. um, so if you like it, you can keep using it. But if you don't, you can just opt out. Exactly. Cool. And I think that that's, right. that's the good path of, of Omakase that we followed mm -hmm. with so many things that Rails by default should have everything in it, should have mm -hmm. all the answers such that you can build a great application without right. changing anything. But if right. you want to change something, if you want to use React instead of Hotwire, if you want to use RSpec instead of mm -hmm. Minitest, if you want to use um, a different kind of backend instead of Active Record, you can do all those things. You can change any individual right. part of it without having to start from scratch. I think the thing with Rails that continues to be special is that we are committed to an integrated framework, a framework mm -hmm. with all the batteries included. and. That today, there's not a lot of competition. If you look at most of the things that are happening in JavaScript land, they're all essentially, um, you just have to put everything together yourself. Um, right. There's some bootstraps, this, that, and the other thing, but there's no one really focused on doing the full integration where they own all the frameworks themselves as part of a package. Um, and I think that's a real shame. I think there's a huge amount of value where you can make the development experience better, you can increase productivity. Um, if you dare assume responsibility for the whole thing. And I think that this is also where um, Rails is perhaps even more unique than frameworks like Django or others that historically have gone with batteries included approaches that they've usually stopped short when it comes to the front end. Rails is saying the front end is part of the application. In fact, much of the argument of Hotwire is that this um, split up front end versus back end, different teams doing front end, different teams doing back end is actually not good. It is mm -hmm. better if you have a right. framework that's so fully integrated, a single developer can make an entire feature from top mm -hmm. to bottom. They can do the front end, they can do the back end, they can do everything that's needed. And not just a single developer making a single feature, but a single person could make a new, great, competitive web application by themselves. That is mm. something that used to be very true. It still is true in certain areas, but so much of technology today is focused on very narrow niches. That like, hey, you have to be a specialist in this little area, and then you work with a bunch of other specialists, and then you can put something together. I don't think that's good. Right, so I think that's um, one of the entities that makes real special. So it cares everything for you. So you don't have to yes. care about like um, each one of the pieces of the uh, component, but um, you can just rail, rails to decide it the first. Um, and then if you don't like it, you can just change it. So yes. I think that's right for liking it as well. ご視聴ありがとうございました。良ければチャンネル登録、グッドボタンお願いします。<音楽>